Want to get messy with painting and create a very quick and easy card panel? Let's get messy with painting. And we don't need paints. Grab your favorite dye inks and let's get painting. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I've got a really simple card, but I love how it turned out. It's all about creating a pretty background and topping it with a greeting. It's a technique that I haven't done in a while. The whole messy paint job, emboss resist. Anyone? So let's do that today and any greeting you have will work. This card is going to be created for my mother, but it would work for any style of card. Stick around, that card project is coming up next. Here are the two key stamp products that I'm going to be using today. This is called Dimensional Quilt and it is a six by six cling stamp. And then I have this wonderful all about mom set, which is great for Mother's Day or just, you know, just acknowledging mom. And there are coordinating dies you can purchase to cut out the greetings. These are the stamps. I'm going to be using a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock because I think I'm going to do some painting today on my background. Haven't painted in a while, so I'm going to grab white embossing powder, a Versamark pad, and I'll probably paint with Distress inks today. So let's start out with some stamping. I've got my Misty tool here and I'm going to take out my insert pad and I, I always tape it into place with a little bit of uh, masking tape just so the pad doesn't slip. And I'm going to take this off the backer and I'll just line this up right inside my Misty. This is how I like to use my clings. Actually, I guess I could come up a little higher there so it's in the camera a little bit more. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smooth side of this. Do I want the smooth side or do I want the nubby side? You know what? I'm going to go nubby. I think I'm going to go nubby and I'm just going to place this smack dab in the middle. Next, I'm going to take some low tack tape. This is pixie tape and I'm going to double it back here and just place this right on to the cardstock. Then what I'll do is pick up the cardstock, just like that, and this will be held into place with that tape so that I can stamp. I'm gonna take my anti-static powder tool. This is the one from Rabbit Hole Designs, the Cottontail tool, and I'm just gonna powder up on this little friend. I probably should have put an extra piece of tape on here, but I think it's gonna be okay. Close it back up, right? We're just removing static and oil. And then I'm going to take my Versamark pad and just add ink to the cling right down the center. Don't have to do the whole thing, of course. Oh, that's nice, my hair. Because, actually that wasn't my hair. This is uh, from the rabbit hole tool. Okay, my hair isn't that short anymore. Oh, that. that. Bring the door down and then I'll grab my stamp press tool and press to transfer the ink. I might stamp this twice because of the texture of the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor cardstock, just to really get a good impression here. Lift it up, and it's so easy to do as well because that doesn't move, your cling doesn't move, and it's very easy to get that second impression. Let's bring that down and press. Let it transfer. We're gonna pick this up off the door and I probably am going to trim this down ever so slightly. I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. This is the Simon Fine Detail White Powder. I'm just gonna sprinkle this all on and I'll add my little clothespin here as soon as I figure out where I can safely added. I couldn't see it at all. Oh, there's even hair. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just, uh, I'm not used to touching this with my hands. All right, let's see here. Oh, that's a nice coating. But here's the thing, I don't, oh, right there, see that? Okay, that's what I was hoping to see. I don't need this full panel because I'm not going to use it all. I'll trim down probably like, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch. Oh, I got quite a bit in the center there. Oop, <laughs> this is, ooh, that's really stuck in there. I wonder why. Now see where all that powder sticks right in there? 
I don't know what happened, but I'm going to grab a small brush and just start brushing that out of that center box. Because that box is kind of critical. I must have just squeezed it with my, or touched it with my finger and maybe didn't get the right amount of uh, anti-static. But you can see this little angled brush is so nice for cleaning up something like this. So if you ever have powder where you don't want it, give it a whirl. Now you can see all the areas are shiny, the powder is melted, and I'm ready to paint. Kind of excited to do this today because I haven't done it in a while, and I'm gonna just make a rainbow, and I'm gonna smush my colors right onto this mat. So hopefully this is a reminder to you how easy it is to do these sort of messy, easy paintings. Let's see. I'm just gonna water them down a little bit. I've got two jars of water just off camera. One is dirty and one is clean. And all I'm gonna do is pick up color and paint. Messy painting. Simple, just to add some color. And I, let's come in here with the next one. I love doing this because the result's gonna look different every time, right? And your paint is gonna look, or well, your inks here, they're gonna look so good when they dry and you can keep coming back in and kind of punching it up a little, right? Get it, get it how you like it to look, see? All right, Biced Marmalade and just, just kind of slotch it down or potch it down. Like that, so easy to do. Mustard Seed. Now I'm using Distress Inks for this. You can use any, any inks to do this. You can use any dye inks. You can use oxides for this. You don't have to have fancy watercolor paints, right? And that's what's beautiful about it. I'm gonna come here at the bottom and get my purple started. Cause I don't know yet, I might have to pick out a few more colors to, for this uh, rainbow. I, haven't, I don't usually do this. I don't usually come in from the bottom and meet in the middle, but I think this is, I think this is gonna be just fine. Look at that. Isn't that pretty where they overlap? It's so nice. Just a nice basic rainbow, right? I think my purple can be pumped up. That looks a little anemic down there at the bottom. Also, the amount of water you get into your ink determines what it's going to look like. See how that totally just pumped it up? I did not dilute that as much. So that's the beautiful thing. You kind of have control over it. Let's get a little more of the peacock. So just kind of keep going over it until it looks how you want it to look. All right. Love that overlap still though, isn't that pretty? The center, I'm actually gonna add a little more right now because I, I could use the droppers for these two, the re-inkers, but honestly, I only have. I'm gonna focus on that green area, and I may bring in uh, another blue. We'll see. Gosh, it's such a cool color. Definitely have a stronger line right there with the blue, but again, you, with this paper, you can just keep adding to it and it really can hold the water and take more, you know, take more as you go. Bumping that up right there on that line. And then of course that cool pattern just resists underneath. It's super nice. Kind of do some overlapping with the green. Kind of create another color in there. See that? Another little bit of dimension. Pick that up. Just sort of bump that up in the middle. Loving it. Get a little more water on there. There we go. Is 
See how it's kind of coming together? You know, let's do a little more of the one lipstick. Just right in there like that. Okay. Kind of come in and overlap a bit. All right. All right, that is the piece. And now I think, if I'm not mistaken, this should clean up really easily. Spritz on some water and just wipe it all down with my cloth. I've never done that before. This thing works really, really well. I'm trying to get more use out of single tools, if that makes sense. Instead of bringing in a palette, you know, you, if you have a slick surface like this, clean up the surface you have. While this is drying, I'm gonna move on to my greeting. I want one of the bigger greetings, but I think Happy Mother, well, I like Happy Mother's Day. You know, sometimes, sometimes I'm just gonna go with an old classic, an old standby. And I'll pop you here onto my cardstock. This is Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound, like that. Let's see here. All right, I'm just gonna rub my fingers over this to prime it a bit. Also have this little tool that has a little leather on it. Let us anti-static powder up with our powder tool, Versamark. Bring it down. And take my stamp press tool and press. Transfer that ink. I might double stamp it. Depends. How, how are we looking there? Probably pretty good, but I'll just make sure that's back in the corner. Give it one more. Now I have this, there's my little embossing clothespin, and we'll just sprinkle this on. Let's see how that gathered my ink. Oh, missed a little there. I hope I got a good stamp impression. I think I did. Oh yeah, that looks good. Funnel this back in. Go in there and get out some of those little pieces. There's something sticking up. I'm gonna grab it with my reverse tweezers cause something, there we go. I think there's a lot of static today in the air because normally, I know it's hard for you to see, but trust me, there's a few little stragglers in there, so let's melt this powder. All right, happy Mother's Day. Look at that. And I love that there's a little bit of texture to the powder. So let's grab the coordinating die so I can cut this out. Got this taped into place and I'm gonna go run this through my Gemini Junior off camera and cut out the greeting. Speaking of die cuts, I'm gonna trim a panel down. You can kind of see this got pretty warpy from the water. So sometimes die cutting definitely helps, right? It's gonna, it's gonna help to chill it out a little. I am going to take, I think this panel and what is this? It's Oh, about three and a half inches by, is it by five? Yep, well, three and a half by four and three quarter. I wanna make sure that I'm getting a little of all the rainbow, but I wanna come in and crop on that. And I wanna try to keep it straight too. So, you know, maybe even just splitting the pattern. So that way I'm getting the crop that I want. I'm gonna go cut this out and let's see how much that flattens it out after I cut it. That helped a little, it's still a little warpy. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pop this just into a book. I don't have to race through my card projects and maybe I'll go, <laughs> I'll go plan dinner. How's that sound? So while that piece is, I'm gonna use the negative space to kind of plan this out. But what if I just did a nice little vellum heart behind the Happy Mother's Day? I might cut one out of scrap. I like that size more than I like that size. Here's another thing about, um, 
these layer dies is I like to use them just when I'm visualizing a design, right? Like you don't even have to have the actual piece there, but that could be kind of cute. I love how this greeting extends to each edge of this heart. And then I could just tack down the heart with a little liquid glue in the center and no one would even know it was there. So I'm gonna go cut out a vellum heart and then we'll start to build the card. I'm gonna score my card base. This is going to be a USA2 top folding portrait orientation. And it will fold down to be four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. Good press. I'm gonna tape my card base closed so it stays nice and flat while I am adding my elements. So I have this idea. Now look at that cute panel. Isn't that pretty? Oh, let's zoom in a little here. What I'm going to do is move this aside. Let's put on our watercolor piece onto the base. But look at that really nice uh, margin of white space, right? We're just gonna press that down right about like that. That looks good. Now here's the idea that I had. I like the idea of the vellum, right? But here's what I think. I wanna put this on first and then add some foam to the back of the vellum, but then I'll do it when I know where it needs to be. Does that make sense? So let's just, Put our, little, put our little heart there. I've got foam squares on the back of this piece. Then, let's get this friend here. And I'm gonna position this right onto the heart where I think that would look nice, right? To have the M and the S and the day right about there. I think that's cute, okay? But what I wanna do is I wanna flip this over. I might have to put a little powder right there because I didn't realize that I was gonna have a foam square that was gonna be sticking. Because here's what I wanna do. I wanna take some more foam, some strips, and right where I see all of this goodness is, I'm gonna take some of this foam. This is just the, is that gonna be long enough there, the Doris? Yeah, I think so right there. That way I'm going to have a little bit of dimension for the vellum itself, which I think will look cool. I, I think it will. I don't know. I just, you know, thought let's try it. Okay. A little bit there too. And now do I need a little there too? Maybe. Bear the rod, spoil the adhesive. That's what I always say. Okay. So then we're actually gonna have a little bit of float with the vellum. Ah, yes, I like it. I hope my mother likes this. Okay, let's remove the backers. Oh, I guess I can use my little tool here. I think that's enough, right? That way I'm hiding it right behind the actual greeting. I don't even know I was gonna make it, make that work so well. All right, let's get you here. And let's get you here. Now I will use a little liquid adhesive on this just so that I have a little wiggle room before I completely commit. So let's get that. This is just connect glue that I keep in these new squeeze bottles from Gina K Designs. And this just gives me a little bit of wiggle room before I have to commit to where I place this. And we're gonna hover Oh, I think there's like kind of a natural position for this to be. Did not even plan that right now. I'm feeling very smart. Look at that. Okay. Oh, again, I have a little wiggle room. See how it's kind of nestling right in there? And now press and let that adhere. Oh, I really like this card. All right, let's get some shine on here. I like, well, let's see though. Maybe I want to go, do I want to have it be a little more staggered like that? I kind of like that arrangement. Let's just do it. Let's just add a little shine again using the same glue and get that straight there and dab a glue. Boop. 
Now this will be a little tricky because there's nothing underneath it, so I don't want to press too hard. I just want to go, boop, it's floating right there on the heart, okay? This little friend, I'm going to boop and slide, right? A little glue and boop, 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 right there, just a little tuck. A little bit of glue there, boop, and small one so we have five a nice odd number Boop. and that is the finished card project I love how this turned out it had been so long since I'd done this emboss resist with just messy rainbow painting but look at how pretty that color is I think my mom's gonna love this and you got that dimension the heart is floating oh I love it Thanks so much for watching today. You can find all of the links to the products I used in today's video below in the YouTube description box. I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.